Hi and welcome to Home Assistant, how to with Bearded Tinker. Today we're going to play a little bit more with the media panel. Well, actually, we're going to work with automations that you can use combined with the, all the new stuff that was added in 2022.3. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we proceed with today's video, I really would like to thank everybody who had joined my YouTube channel and have become a YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to everybody who subscribed, watched or liked my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. And now, let's get started with today's video. A lot of cool and interesting things were added in the version 2022.3, and most of them were in regard to the media tab. In this video, we will be looking at some automations and how you can expand them and improve them and add more usability and make them more user friendly. So we'll start with the radio browser. No, I'm not wrong. This really is radio browser, but this is the backend of Home Assistant. Well, actually. Home Assistant is using this radio-browser.info website to pull the information about the radio stations. Currently, it has more than 30,000 radio stations, with more than 100,000 people clicking on the links in this website. Why am I showing you this? Because later on, during the automation process, we will be talking about the names and tags of the radio stations, and it's not that easy to match the ID or unique ID that Home Assistant creates with the radio station itself. And that part, unfortunately, will be a hard part when you are doing your own automations. But let's go back to Home Assistant and look at Radio Browser there. So you probably know by now that if you want to add Radio Browser, you have to go to Configuration, Integrations, click on Plus or Add Integration, type Radio, and add Radio Browser. Of course, I cannot do that because my Radio Browser integration is already installed and configured. And no, there is actually nothing to configure except click on OK or Add. Some people were wondering, well, I've added Radio Browser and it's empty. And that's normal because Radio Browser integration is not displayed here. You cannot see anything here. Instead, you have to go to Media tab, Radio Browser, and all the data that is pulled from Radio Browser website is in this media tab called Radio Browser. You can browse them by popularity, by category, by language, or the default one is by the national flag. So you've probably came to idea, well, actually, I can create a playlist, playlist of different radio stations, and then I can go through them. Actually, you can do that, but that's not that easy. Unfortunately, this UI part is custom friendly. What's behind it is not. So let's go back and start creating first automation. We will be working once again on alarm clock, but this time we will be adding some more logic to it. Once again, we'll create a new automation, start with empty one, and we will call it radio alarm clock. For the device trigger, once again, we will be using time. It will be fixed time, and we will set it at 7.30 a.m. Now that we have specified that we want this radio to play at 7.30, the only thing that is mandatory to be able to play the radio is go to Actions, select Play Media, select Media Player, for example, it will be Display Me in my case. We will pick Media and we have decided that we want to play the radio. But what if you do not want to play radio and instead you want to play some music either off of your local storage on Home Assistant or some attached or DLNA server? Well, let's look at both versions. First, let's go to local media. Here you can select any file that you have locally stored on your Home Assistant. For example, this one here. But what if you want to play something from, for example, your Synology that has been recognized as DLNA server? Once again, select Play Media, Display Me once again, and we will pick DLNA Server, Synology, Music, and I will randomly pick one song. For example, to Unlimited, No Limit. If anyone from you is asking how does the path look to this file, well, let's look at YAML file. 
We have service, media player dot play media. We have target, this is the entity ID, media player display me, that we selected. And then we have mandatory and non-mandatory fields. For mandatory fields, we have data, media content ID, which is the media source with the path, this is DLNA, underscore DMS, slash name of my device. This is the MDNS name of the device. And then the file identifier itself. And as you can see, no, you cannot figure out what this really is. And the last mandatory field is media content type, which is audio slash MPEG. The other data, such as metadata, is not mandatory. This is something that has been pulled from the DLNA server. So if you want to play with this in your automations file, yeah, you have to figure out these parts here. But we said that we want to play radio. So I will once again select play media. Display me, pick media, radio browser, and select Otvoreni Radio. I did mention that there is radio-browser.info website where you can check and see all the radio stations that are available also through Home Assistant. If we look for Otvoreni Live and go to YAML, we will see that Home Assistant has created a unique ID for this radio station. And unfortunately, as far as I have seen, there is no connection between this unique ID here and the one provided through the radio browser. Let's search for Otvoreni Radio there. So here we have Otvoreni Live, which is the one that we have selected in Home Assistant. We have information, what is the format, bitrate, votes, clicks, uh, also have some meta text, language, country, pop, pop rock, when was the last check done, last contact, and the last change. You can go to homepage, but let's click here and see some more information. This is the information that you can see here. It has streaming URL, change history, location, stream clicks, check times, and that's it. If we try to find the unique ID for Home Assistant, the only similar thing is this one here, A3B831BF. But as you can see, this is the thumbnail unique ID, not the station itself. So if you are looking for easy way to match the station with the ID number, unfortunately for each and every station that you would like to manually add to some automation, script or similar, you will have to find this unique ID by going through the automations or scripts and then looking at the YAML file. Okay, so now we have created the same alarm clock, same boring alarm clock, like I did in the previous video. But what if we want to create much smarter and, yeah, better alarm clock for the radio? Well, first of all, let me edit in YAML, copy everything here, and let's go to my main setup. In my automations folder, I will create new file and call it radio alarm clock dot yaml and in this file i have copied everything from the test setup and that is that simple automation that includes trigger and action what we want to do here is add some more logic and for this we are going to use condition first thing i want to do here is add some logic or condition i want to check if it's workday or not to do that, I've added condition. Condition is state and the entity is binary sensor workday today. This binary sensor is checking if today is a workday or not. When I say not, it can be either holiday, public holiday or weekend. Let's quickly check the binary sensor. This is how this binary sensor is created. It is using platform workday. Name is workday today because I also have additional binary sensor that is workday tomorrow. And I'm using that one to check if tomorrow is Saturday or tomorrow is Monday. Not exactly that, but it's mostly used for that. Croatia has been selected as country because I want to check it against the Croatian public holiday list. Of course, you can use different workdays, for example, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can exclude Saturday, Sunday say holidays add specific holidays that are normally not in the public holiday list for your country, etc. But that was topic of my previous video and you can find that video up here. And the only thing that is missing is state. But this automation is missing one more thing. What happens if you are on your holidays and you are not at home? This script would still run. 
of course, if it's a workday, but we don't want to do that. So we will be adding additional condition to check if we are home or not. And here it is, condition state, entity ID is binary underscore sensor dot people underscore home. And we are checking for the state on. State on means that at minimum there is a one person at home. But how are we creating binary sensor people home? People home binary sensor is very simple template binary sensor. So let's look at the code. We have platform template sensors. I am naming it people underscore home. And then we have value template. We are checking is state person dot Andre at home. And this is the information that is pulled from your device trackers. And device trackers can be anything from the mobile app, Live360, Tile that we don't like, or any other service that provides you device trackers. If the condition is met, the device tracker is at home and one of those or all of those people are at home, this sensor will be in the state on. And this is the easiest way on how you can track if there is at least one person at home. This binary sensor is great and I use it in a lot of automations to check if this is alarm, for example, front door is open and there is nobody at home, or if this is just a normal state or event where, yeah, somebody has opened the door but forgot to close it. And now our alarm clock has a little bit more logic. So each morning at 7.30, if it's a workday and if we or at least somebody is at home, it will play this radio station on the speaker display me. Of course, you are free to play with this. You can, for example, add some light on action with the transition. You can also try and play media file before the radio turns on. You can also play text to speech message before playing the radio, but this automation ends with the radio player. And yes, as I've said at the start of the video, instead of radio browser, of course, you can use your DLNA server, you can use local files or any other media file that is available and seen in the media tab. Before Home Assistant added this Play Media ability, this is how my stream camera to a Chromecast device automation looked like. So we had stream camera on motion. It, there was a trigger, binary sensor living room motion. When it turned from the off to on state, this camera would be streamed to the media player Display Me, which is a Google Nest device. Now it's much easier to do this and you can also add some more functionality to it. So let's look what we can do now. If we now want to create automation that would be streamed upon trigger on our living room TV or a Chromecast display, we have to go to configuration, automation, create new automation, start with empty, stream, camera, on, movement. For trigger, we will select state, living room motion, goes from off to on. Now, when there is a living room motion occupancy, meaning that the sensor is activated or changes from the off to on state, we want to trigger something. And this something will be play media, On the media player, we will pick up something and I will be using camera. This one here. Save. And if I would now run this action, you can see on the Google display that it is currently streaming media or stream from this camera. And this is very simple way on how to trigger streaming, for example, from your front door camera or any other camera you have to whatever Chromecast device you want to stream. Yes, it would work with most of the Chromecast devices. But let's once again copy this and go back to my main setup. This is how my current camera triggering is looking. I'm using a webhook created in Home Assistant that Synology surveillance station calls if there is any motion or activity detected in the surveillance station. So my Synology surveillance station is triggering Home Assistant webhook. And when this webhook is triggered, I create a snapshot from that camera and save this image locally. Then I run image processing, Facebook's saved image, 
This is the image processing of this saved image to see if there is a known face or not. And by the way, if you don't know what Facebox is or how to install it and integrate inside Home Assistant, I have one very old video on that. Check the link above. And this is our new automation. So we created previously Trigger, which is really a Akara motion sensor, and when it's triggered to on, it then calls this action. This action is to play media on my Google Nest or Google Display device, and this is the stream source. It's media source, camera, and camera from my 3D printer. What I could potentially do is add also this platform webhook, and just imagine that this is my front door camera. So in this case, my camera stream would be displayed on the Display Me or Chromecast device if there is either motion in the living room or there is an external call to this webhook, in my case from a surveillance station. What are some other options? Well, other options are you can use anything from here and use Play Media to push it to whatever Chromecast device you want. This can be camera, DLNA server, local media, you can push your loveless dashboard, radio, we've shown how to do, or text-to-speech. These media sources can be used for anything, ranging from a pure pleasure, such as playing radio or music, either remote music, local music, or radio, but they can also be used as a security, baby monitor devices, etc. It's all up to you to think of some additional ways on how to implement it in your own setup. If you have any great suggestion for this one, I really would like to read them, so leave a comment down in the comment section below, or even better, leave one in the Discord server. The link to Discord server is in the description of the video. If anybody figures out an easy, nice way to pull and match radio station names with the unique IDs in Home Assistant, I really would like to hear it and see it. Because there are some ideas that could be really great, but unfortunately, I still cannot figure out, for example, how to create a random media player from the DLNA server files. Or to create some customized playlist. And I do not mean Spotify playlist, but my local playlist, either from the media on the local server or home assistant, or from the DLNA servers. So, if you figured out a way, or found out that somebody else has figured out a way, drop me a link down below, find me on Twitter, or leave a comment on the Discord server. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It means not just a lot to me, but it really helps with the YouTube channel algorithms. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future videos and, of course, streams. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.